What's going on guys, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net and welcome to part one of our 2022 Wimbledon Finals match analysis between Novak Djokovic and Nick Kyrgios. To find out how Djokovic beat Kyrgios in this match, stay tuned because it's coming up next. All right, guys, before we jump into some points, let's jump into some quick stats. And let's talk about points won by rally link numbers. On a faster surface like grass, usually the points are gonna be shorter than they are at, for instance, the French Open. The French Open, we had a lot of longer points in that final, but what did we get here? One to four shot points were 67% of the points played in this match, with Djokovic winning 52% of those points. Five to eight shot points were 22% of the points that were played in this match, with Djokovic winning 57% of those points. 9 to 12 shot points were 6% of the points played in this match, with Djokovic winning 64% of those. And 13 plus shot points were just 5% of the points played in this match, and Djokovic won 82% of the extended or super long points. So not only was Djokovic able to win the 1 to 4 shot point category against somebody like Kyrgios, who serves really well, but he also won the longer points. Let's take a look at some of the things that allow him to win not only the short points, but especially the longer ones. All right, guys, let's jump into the first point. We've got Djokovic here on the near side, Kyrgios on the far side returning. Nice wide serve from Novak, and Nick does a good job here of stretching and lunging, but he's able to get aggressive, look at that, very aggressive off of a pretty good serve from Novak. It wasn't a bad serve at all, it was a good serve. Nick's lunging, but does a great job of attacking Novak and does damage to Novak right away. And what is damage? Damage is any time you get your opponent reaching or lunging like this, get them backing up or stretching in a defensive position. So he has damaged Novak clearly here with this shot. And Novak is really the king when it comes to being off balance in these positions and producing good counters to those damaging shots. Let's see if he's able to counter here. It's sort of an in-play ball or neutral ball versus a true counter, but he does a great job of finding zone three depth, right? So he's able to take this ball from a tough position and still hit it deep on his opponent's side of the court. That's not something a lot of people can do time and time again. So let's see what Nick does. Cranks the flat backhand, right? That shovel skidding backhand that he has. And he gets zone three depth against Djokovic. That ball landed back here in zone three, nice deep ball, and he's got Novak on the defense again. And let's see what Novak does. Really what you can learn from Novak here is when you're in these defensive or tough positions, you need to maintain balance the best that you can, sink your hips down, get your legs low, and try to keep your head over your hips the best that you can. Try not to be tilting off to either side because that's when you lose your balance and lose control of the ball. Let's see what he does with this. And Novak does a good job of just keeping it down even though it's short in zone two, right? So he's got a zone two ball, which is short for Nick, and Nick wants to pounce on that. But because it's such a low ball here, instead of a higher sitting ball, it gets through the court pretty quick. Nick's gonna have to lift this up. And we can see Nick doing that right here. He's being forced to lift from this position with the racket, and he's really lifting like this. And this is Novak's opportunity right here for the ball to hopefully sit up on his side of the court so he can do some damage to Nick. But let's see what happens. Nick hits that in zone two, right? Nice ball, lands in zone two with good pace, but it is more top spinny than flat. And that means Novak has a look here possibly to counter him. Let's see what happens. He runs over and slides, right? He's sliding on grass and granted it's worn out, but he's still sliding on grass into a forehand on defense. This is Novak's third situation in a row where he's on defense just in this point. Let's see what he's able to do with this. He cranks an insane angle from a really bad defensive position. And now he's done counter damage to Nick, right? And then what's a counter situation? We've talked about this in past videos, but counters are anytime your opponent does damage to you or hurts you, right? And you're able to flip the script on them. You're able to counter and reverse the situation. You can either counter somebody and just kind of neutralize, get back to neutral. You can counter them and do damage or you can counter them and hit a winner. In this situation, he's done counter damage. We can see Nick is clearly lunging for the ball. And what's gonna happen is he's gonna end up hitting short because he's in such a tough position because Novak hit that amazing shot. There's the short weak ball, right? As soon as he lost that control of his body, Novak knows that and Novak's already sneaking in. As soon as he sees that lunging or reaching position, he's already sprinting in. He knows it's coming and then 
finishes with that backhand. But Novak's able to play defense there three times in a row, reverse the situation in the end. But as soon as he got Nick damaged one time, that was enough to produce a short ball. Nick had to damage Novak three times and still couldn't get a weak short ball inside zone one. All right, so we're jumping into the second point now. We've got Kyrgios serving on the far side, Novak on the near side here. Let's see what we get. Nice wide serve from Nick. He was serving absolute bombs this whole match. Served 73% of his first serve points in. Okay, first serves in. But Novak there, right? Just example number one. He's in this kind of tough reaching position. He's in the alley, but he still produces a ball deep in zone three and puts Nick immediately on the defense. We've got Kyrgios squatting down, right? Anytime we're squatting like this and the head is not aligned completely with the hips, we have a poor balance position, which could mean that we're going to end up hitting a short ball, but let's see what actually happens in this point. Nick hits short, but I like what he does with it. So what I mean by that is he does a good thing, even though it's short in zone one, it's so low that Novak is slicing and going into a defensive shot versus an aggressive one. You can see by his preparation, instead of get aggressive, okay? So Nick does a nice job there. And Novak's contact point here is very low. It's really just a bunt shot there. That's a good opportunity though for Nick to attack because he's getting the short ball here in zone two, but it doesn't look like he's getting super aggressive with it. So he comes from here and he hits the scoop and what he's trying to do is create an angle and kind of take Novak off the court. So he hits zone two and it's nice and wide and he's trying to position Novak off the court, probably hoping for a forehand on the next ball. Let's see what happens. Novak's preparing the slice again, right? Comes over to hit this defensive slice and look what Novak does with the slice. It's extremely difficult to back an opponent up like he's done here with Nick and put them on defense off of a slice because a slice doesn't push forward in the court. It skids, okay? But Nick here, and this is one of the flaws with the Nick's technique. It's the forehand side. He's got this super high elbow position. Let's look at that real quick. Look at that elevated elbow. His elbow is above his shoulder, which is an unnecessary move just technique-wise on the forehand, okay? So it takes longer for Nick to drop the racket back down and getting to the contact point in the forward swing position than he needs it to be, and this causes problems for him, and right here is one of those situations. Let's see what he does with Djokovic's deep slice here. And there it is. So that technical flaw within Nick's game and the nice shot from Novak produces a short ball right away. Okay, so we got a ball in zone one. Novak here with his body looking to attack, looking to move forward, look at the footwork, right? Look what he's doing with his feet. Comes up and hits a pretty nice backhand here. One of Nick's weaknesses is his movement. So Novak is hitting wide here to try to get Nick a little bit off the court without having to hit a winner to see if he can produce something in short in zone one again or something really weak that sits up. Let's see what actually happens though from this wide position. There it is, right? So Nick is stretched just a little bit having to hit from an open stance. He hits Again, short. Look at all these short balls from Kyrgios in this point. But hits short in zone one. Novak can move even further up on this ball now to attack, right? And that's what he's doing. And the next one here has a little bit more punch to it again. And the mistake that Nick makes, because he's not a phenomenal mover, is Nick actually guesses and split steps in the opposite direction like this. Because he thinks Novak's going to take the ball down the line. Also, because Nick is not a super fast mover, he gets exposed here for guessing and he can't make up for his guess mistake. Novak's fast enough to guess wrong a lot of times and still make up for that. But Nick guesses wrong and now look at Nick, right? We've got Nick in a crazy position here, lunging and reaching, nowhere near in line with the hips. This should be a very weak ball here. Let's see what actually happens though. It's super weak. So not only is it landing short, but it's sitting up, okay? Because it wasn't able to maintain his balance position. So now Novak has a great opportunity to finish. Small target, zone three, easy peasy. He's willing to take the risk here of a small target in zone three because he's got great position, he's balanced, and Nick has hit very short and very weak. And there it is. All right, before we move on to the next point, one thing I wanna talk about is something called damage. And Novak was an absolute beast in this match with his backhand doing damage frequently. And we talked about damage 
in the first part of this video and what it is, right? So in this match, if we look at the total damage stats, Novak did damage to Kyrgios 53 times in this match with his ground strokes. 45% of those were forehands and 55% of those were actually backhands. If we look at Kyrgios' numbers, we can see that Kyrgios did damage 39 times to Novak total with his ground strokes. 56% of those were forehands and 44% of those were backhands. So most players on tour have a big forehand. That is standard these days to have a gigantic forehand, but to be able to take your backhand and do damage consistently to your opponents is key because the bigger forehands are, the more important your ability to defend against those big forehands becomes. And Novak's backhand being so good is a huge reason for his success on a fast surface like this. All right, so let's jump into this third point and take a look at Novak's backhand now and see why it's so tough, especially on quicker surfaces. We've got Novak serving, Nick receiving. Nick does a nice job there, just taking that backhand return from inside the baseline, okay? And Nick is actually in zone three when returning this or inside the baseline. That's pretty standard against second serves, especially on quicker surfaces when you're trying to take people's time away. French Open, you might see a lot of returns hit from zone five, way back behind the baseline. Takes the backhand here and does a nice job hitting it in zone two, getting aggressive against Novak and trying to get him on defense. And the depth here, is pretty good because he's making Novak go from one side of the court to the other. And against a lot of players, just making him go from one side of the court to the other when attacking will make them hit short. But let's see what Novak does. You can see Novak here in a very defensive position with his body, okay? Does a great job hitting from open stance. And one of the biggest separators for Novak, besides his ability to run, is that he controls ball depth and direction really well with his hands and his body, his aim, when he's in these defensive positions, most people just can't do that. And what he's able to do as well is keep it away from guys' forehands on the next ball. So let's see if he can keep it away from Nick's forehand. There's the phenomenal aim, okay? I'm talking about insane aim and control of the ball with your hands from these poor positions, not allowing Nick to get a sniff at a forehand that might land somewhere in here. It's way outside of that position. Nick has no chance to hit a forehand. On top of that, Novak has countered and he's doing damage to Nick by getting Nick on the run, hitting from an open stance in a tough position here. And Nick does a pretty good job with that. And again, he's improved a lot on that backhand side. Technique still needs a little bit of work, but Nick keeps Novak from hitting a forehand and keeps his backhand over on this side. The only issue with Nick's shot, it's landing short in zone two, and Novak can definitely thump a zone two ball. Let's see what happens. And he does it again, right? So this one's not a huge shot, but Novak's moving inside the court. He's using that low body position. Look at the balance here. Keeps his head over those hips centered and takes this backhand and maneuvers it. It's not a huge shot. It's a medium pace shot, but it's landing here deep in zone three. And Nick has that big windup on the forehand. That's gonna cause problems for him. So we've talked about Nick's windup on the forehand and how his elbow ends up above his shoulder and how that's excessive, it takes too long for him to get through that swing and forces poor contact a lot of the time. So again, look at the elbow position here, how high it is, it's too elevated, okay? That elbow really only needs to separate a little bit from the body as you bring your racket back, a little bit of space between the elbow and the body. Nick has too much space and it causes Nick to be even later on this forehand contact point. Let's see what happens with the shot but he does a pretty good job playing a defensive ball. So he loops it up on the defense. Novak though, it's grass. He's not gonna back up like he would maybe on clay. He takes this super early and gets aggressive with his backhand. And Novak just takes that and finds zone three depth here, which means it's gonna be tough for Nick to attack right here. And Nick hits a weak shovel backhand. And I'm not picking on Nick Kyrgios, trust me, this guy would double bagel me in about 10 seconds on a tennis court. But I wanna break down things and show you what things might be costing players in a point and why perfection is the ultimate goal and why Djokovic is sort of the model of perfection, okay, in terms of technique and strategy and all these other things. But look at Nick's preparation on the racket here. This is perfect, this is spot on. This is what we see with everybody. Racket to the outside of the ball as it's coming in, the outside of the body here, okay? Very standard on tour. Where Nick struggles on his two-handed backhand and why I kind of call it a shovel shot is as the racket comes back here, you can see his racket does not always go back behind his hands here. 
And players that hit technically sound backhands on the tour level, the racket head will go behind the hands nine times out of 10 like this before it comes back forward to swing at the ball. Nix consistently doesn't get to that position. It ends up becoming kind of this bunt shot and that bunt will sit up and get attacked on the next ball. So let's see what happens on this shot. There it is. It's weak. And Djokovic doesn't attack this, it's just a push backhand. Doesn't attack it with pace, he goes to the drop shot because there's already hit all these great backhands in the point. You know, first one here, here, and here. All these deep shots. Now he goes for a little touch because he's stretched the court so much. What do I mean by stretch the court? Novak has pushed Nick back and made Nick honor all these deep balls that Novak has hit. And now Novak's going to stretch the court and go to zone one with this drop shot knowing Nick's probably expecting another deep ball in the point, right? So it opens things up. But Nick's technique actually cost him in that point, and Novak exposed it. All right, let's jump into the last point now. We've got Novak serving on the near side, Kyrgios returning from the far side, due side position. Clear second serve toss here, and second serve pronation again from Djokovic. And it's to the body, okay, that middle third of the court, Nick Inside zone three again, trying to take time from Djokovic and trying to attack with the backhand. And he does a pretty good job with it as far as the time and moving again Novak from one side of the court to the opposite side of the court over here. The only issue Nick maybe has, again, a little bit short on this one, landing in zone one. But Novak does a heck of a job of controlling himself when he has to move a lot and controlling his shot position and direction. And there it is again. He's able to take balls that are difficult for most players and he's able to keep them out of the middle third of the court here and able to get them on this side of the court and keep it away from that guy's forehand. And he does it right there and forces Nick into that backhand, right? So Nick hits the backhand, that little shovel backhand. It's a pretty good shot, but hits it short in zone two right here. And that's an opportunity, right, for Novak to attack. As soon as Nick can't produce depth with that backhand, that technique issue, Novak steps up. It hits deep here in zone three, and he's able to attack Nick. And what do we see from Nick again over here on this side? We see that high elbow position we've talked about. It takes too long for him to get through the swing. It's a technical deficiency, and Novak's exploiting it with these zone three backhands down the line time and time again. And Nick ends up hitting short and into the net right there. And again, I'm not picking on Nick Kyrgios. The guy would kill me on a tennis court. But Novak is sort of the king and Rafa of picking and prodding at people and breaking down technical deficiencies to get advantages and points. It's like playing chess. It's very simple. I match my strong pieces if I can against your weaker pieces. And I'm just doing this over and over and over again. So Djokovic did a phenomenal job here of exposing Nick's backhand and also his forehand throughout the course of these rallies. All right, that wraps it up for part one of our Wimbledon finals match analysis between Novak Djokovic and and Nick Kyrgios. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time. Come on.